One love back again, Brother Sean. Just going for a walk on this early, early summer day. I think it's about the fourth day of summer. And it's a blessed day as the seasons start to change. I wanna talk about calendars, as I said. There's been a great, great, great deception with calendars and it's affected all of us in the world, the whole world. And I wanna to present to you the revelation of the true scriptural calendar. And I do know that many people already are promoting the same idea and notion. Hopefully my work can also get in there as well, that you can be like the Berean and test the spirit. I'm pretty knowledgeable in calendars and I've definitely researched most calendars that claim to be the scriptural calendar to observe the holy days because that's really why you want the true calendar is to observe the holy days and there's been a play with everything from down to the day what a day is the idea of what a week is when a week begins and ends the months whether they're lunar months solar months 30 day months the seasons the year lengths 365.25 364 with the calendar of Enoch and as well the scriptural calendar does share that same notion there are 364 days in a common year but there's also sabbatical years and I'll talk about that in a bit when it comes to years then there's also grouping of years and this is where years are grouped into sevens into 28s and into jubilees and into 700 year cycles eventually into 1000 year cycles and 7,000 year cycles. The Holy Scriptures covers everything from the beginning till the end and as we go into the new creation. And that's about 7,000 years and we can even push it to 8,000 years when we talk about the eighth day. The idea of a 24 hour day, the nighttime period of 12 hours approximately, let's say, and then the daylight period time. Yes, in context, the day can be referring only to the daylight period. I get that, but also when you read in the scriptures greatly, it speaks about 24 hour days and dates. And dates are very, very important. When it comes to dates, you have to understand, obviously it must be a 24 hour period. And it's associated with the genuine 24 hour day. Now, I know many people will keep a 12 hour Sabbath and I speak about these things on my channel but there is no 12 hour Sabbath, it's 24 hours. However, there is a controversy regarding when does the Sabbath begin? Is it from morning till morning or evening till evening? I think the scriptures are very clear. I think Genesis chapter one, the very first day of creation, lets us know that there was a dark period and then there was a light period first. These are the little things that can come into play. Then how long is a month? And for the most part, the controversy about scriptural months comes down to lunar months, 30-day months, and how those who profess the Enoch Jubilee Essene calendar as being 30-day months, and then of course, the third month of every season, so to speak, so months three, six, nine, and 12 would have 31 days, equivalent 364. 364 is good. One thing I found though, the problem with those who profess the Enoch calendar, and I've read the book of Enoch already, I use it as a reference, but I don't use it as standard. You can prove a 364 day through scripture as a simple wisdom with a seven day weekly cycle and 52 weeks in a year. Seven times 52 is 364. And the Most High does his things perfect. And this idea of 364, which those who use the Enoch calendar, as opposed to those who use a lunar solar calendar, is that the feast days are set and fixed. And that's very important when I read the scriptures. Just like the seventh day Sabbath is set and fixed, even so, all the festivals are fixed on the proper day of the week, for each festival, whether it's a week-long festival, and that's the thing to understand too. All the festivals, these are tied to the weekly cycle. Greatly tied to the weekly cycle. So saying that Passover will always begin on the first day of the week. Tabernacles will always begin on the first day of the week. And 
the Feast of Pentecost will always be begin on the first day of the week, and that's your three major festivals, your pilgrimages. But on the Enoch calendar, it's fixed upon basically the fourth day of the week or the Wednesday, and that's where a little bit of an error comes in. Now let me jump to the lunar calendar issue because I know that when we read the scriptures, King James is what I study from, but I study from many translations, especially older ones. Older translations seem to, older English seem to be, you know, very worth studying to see how the evolution of English has evolved. English is always evolving. It's a borrowing language. It borrows from all the ancient roots of Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, Aramaic, Phoenician, which is really Canaanite language. But when it comes now to this idea of the moon in the scriptures, you'll see that the words new moon are in the KJV. And they should mean new month or the beginning of the month. And those who profess a lunar calendar, so to speak, or lunar months, they will say, yes, it does mean new month, but it's synonymous or linked to the lunar cycle. And there is a great, great, great controversy here. Some use the full moon as the beginning, uh, some use the crescent, some use the dark moon. But I know those who use the, the calendar of Enoch and Jubilee, they don't use the lunar months at all. There's no 29 and 30 day months. And that's the same way for the true scriptural calendar that I profess. And this calendar that I profess, basically no one has researched it. No one has really actually heard about it. And to go through the channel to watch the long videos on it is important because people figure it's just another person saying something else about calendars and I do know how it goes. But I have to say that I've did my research as well on almost every calendar that says it's scriptural to get a good understanding. And you can see similarities, you can see the differences, and you can see the errors. And what I'm professing is that Enoch calendar is in error. The lunisolar calendar is in great error. It's the Babylonian calendar. We should not be dealing with the moon or the sun, so to speak, in terms of honoring holy days, but they are for signs, seasons, days, and years. And that's important to remember. And I know people will translate the word seasons as moed to be appointed feast days, but that's not what the Father appointed those things for in the beginning. They were for all mankind. And for the most part, you can see that those who use lunar calendars outside of people who say it's Israel, you can see greatly that it's very paganized. The names of the moon, how it's attached to the queen of heaven, greatly it is the queen of heaven, the moon. And a lot of the miscues or lies that have been spoken about the moon as well, that it, she or it doesn't give its own light. We should not be celebrating any holy days with the sun, moon, or stars at all. There are appointed days that the Father had brought in from the beginning. And the issue is here when it comes to those who use astronomical calendars. I do get it. They are for signs, seasons, days, and years, but for seasons. Like now it's summer, the sun is out longer, it's getting warmer. And depends on, of course, where you are on the earth, but the seasons will be apparent in any which way that way, especially just the idea of summer and winter. We can speak about spring and autumn another time because those are not scriptural terms, but there are agricultural seasons that are important. But let's just deal with summer and winter anyways. The sun stays out longer, you know, in the summertime, it's like I said, it's hotter. And the, and the moon has its, you know, lesser time to be out in the sky visible. And the moon can also be seen in the daytime. For actually 50% of its cycle, it is in the daytime. That's something to check out. But it's going to have a shorter duration, just like how the nights will become shorter and the daylights will be longer. And then the reverse is so for winter. And with winter, it's a wet season. It's a snowy season. Snow and rain, these are precipitation. So even if you're in you know, northern countries, I'm in Toronto, Canada, we get a lot of snow during these months from November even till April, so to speak, but they are rains. However, in Jerusalem, of which we profess the Most High's calendar is attached to, the climate of summer and winter cannot be denied. Summer season begins in May. The winter season begins in November. They're both six month periods according to the historical records that have always been for Jerusalem and Israel per se, because there's other parts, it's not just Jerusalem, but the land of Canaan. And then according to the scriptures, it shows you which months that these are. And then we use the Gregorian calendar to try to figure out where we are because that's what's here helping us now. But big issues, 
right? No moon. And one thing, there, there's no equinox. I want to go on and talk about this equinox and the solstices. These are false beginning of seasons. They're astronomical. They're tied to astrology. And as well, they're just plain old false. There's no governing body or anything that has said, oh, these are supposed to be the beginning of seasons. I'm trying to use the whole, you know, equal day, equal night. And then that's when the Most High began things. He began things at the equinox, the Tukufa, the Tukufa. Yeah, but that's false. Those are the midpoints or the equidistance of the seasons. And they've been kept good by the Gregorian calendar. But if you look in any history, you can see that many people and nations and still some today observe the true seasons whereas the equinoxes and solstices are the middle of the seasons not the beginning it's actually a north american european trick even the europeans the ancient celtics celtics they and today even in ireland they still observe the true beginning of seasons yes they attach it to paganism but that's just how it goes. They worship the creation rather than the, than the creator. But the truth of the matter is that they have the right, you know, record of the seasons. It's been like that. It has, nothing has changed. Egypt knew it. All ancient nations knew it. But they just corrupted their system of time. Just like it says in the scriptures, Daniel chapter 7, 25, that think to change times. And you'll see that every nation that conquers Israel has their own times, their own calendars that were different from Israel. And the Babylonian calendar, when Israel went into captivity, that deals with lunar solar months as well, is the same makeup of today's calendar that many of us, many people believe in the Messiah, Israelites and Gentiles, they observe the equinoxes and solstices and these lunar months based upon the same reckoning system of the Babylonians. It's not much, it's not very hard to check out. And what I usually speak about things, I usually take a lot of time to research what, you know, the errors are, to know and understand calendars. And you have to take time. It takes time. And many people will not want to give up, you know, how they've been observing a certain calendar. So be it. But the time is coming where these things are going to be so. I mean, just think about it. In prophecy, it lets you know that the sun, moon, and stars are going to be darkened. It lets you know also in the new kingdom that the Most High and His Son are going to be the light for the city, heavenly Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with the moon. There's still going to be months. It's going to, the tree of life is still going to give 12, bear 12 fruits each month, its own fruit. In the city, it says. There's no such thing as 13th month or 13th moon. And that's where it's deceptive. Now for those, again, going back to the Enoch and Jubilee calendar, they're much closer to the, the Most High's true almanac, his calendar. They are closer. But the thing is that they start their time frames from the beginning and creation of the sun, moon, and stars, which is an error. Time began from day one. Those days counted. Jah was counting time. The seventh day Sabbath is the seventh day from the first day of creation. Not from the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. And probably like, you know, the Father in His wisdom, He knew what He was doing. If He would have made the sun, moon, and stars on the first day of creation, just look how much people worship the sun, moon, and stars. And that's been the great error of Israel and all other nations, because it's really Baal and Ashtoreth, Ashtoreth worship. Yeah, it's a, it's a big thing. So this is my message. And if you check my channel, you'll see many videos. Take time, go through it. It's study. This is school time. The months that we profess for the scriptural calendar from Zion that was revealed to David Ray over the last many years. He's passed away now. These months can be built from the Holy Scriptures, the words, using wisdom, logics, a good proper explanation to explain the length of every single month. So for the record, the Zion Assembly of Judah is different. We begin our years and spring in February, the latter rain season according to the Bible, and according to the climate in Israel, not according to no equinox or what people think about temperatures or anything like that. That's what we believe. It's 364 days. And every seventh year is a sabbatical year. And there's an extra seven days added to the last month of that year, which is Adar. And it becomes a sabbatical year. And we call that year a minor sabbatical year. So there will be 371 days in that year. And this keeps all the alignment of the seasons. And because the equinoxes and solstices do keep things in alignment with the solar times. But it's not holy times. Nothing comes out of whack. 
whereas the Enoch calendar, if you just use a 364 day calendar every year, the seasons will be out of whack with the festivals and that's true. But with sabbatical years, which are scriptural, you will see that every seventh year has extra days. And there's a 28 year cycle. And in this 28 year cycle, it's how the Gregorian calendar and equinoxes and solstices operate. Please research the Gregorian 28 year cycle and you'll see it's not really governed about the sun, moon and stars and exactly when they come at this time and this day and why it keeps shifting. It's because it's a, a numbering of days. And in a 20 year cycle, you have 10,227 days. And in Jazz Almaki's 28 year cycle, utilizing sabbatical years, you have 10,227 days, same way. They know what's going on. The Gregorian calendar is the more proper calendar out here in terms of keeping the seasons in play. But you can't have festivals on it. It begins the year in January. It's really a money calendar, but it's the devil's calendar and it's gonna be going to the end. But the so-called lunisolar calendar that deals with any moon at all observing festivals, lunar sabbaths, having your festivals be on the full moon or your months beginning on the full moon or the crescent, all of that deceptive understanding and we have to come out of that that's why our people got mashed up when it says they worship Baal and Ashtaroth you read the verses around it, it they're linked to the sun moon and stars there's many calendar, calendars out there that try to use the Maseroth the Maseroth is the constellations the word for the constellations in the scriptures there's a lot going on and we're very small and we're promoting these things and it's just those who know calendars will catch it get a good understanding They'll catch it. You have to be interested in calendars though. You have to research every single thing. Learn about these things. It takes time. And if you're a leader out there, stop with the lunar calendar. If you're dealing with the Enoch calendar, Jubilee calendar, continue to grow and learn. And I want to share these things with the world. It's not about being proud and boastful. And I have to be a little bit sure in what I'm saying. But we are in the end times and there's probably not much more than a 200 years left and none of us right now hearing this message will be alive at that time, but this will be in the future. And not this video per se, but just calendar, his truth, his laws, commandments, and statutes. I believe in the Most High Father, and I believe in his Son. No Trinity, and the Messiah is not the Father. There are two. And don't worry about that whole idea of, you might say, there's no other God beside me. There is no other eternal, immortal one. But the Messiah is the first. He's the first of everything. He's the firstborn of creation, firstborn from the Father, and He's the last that way. So it's okay to be first. He made this earth, Him and His Father, by the power of the Spirit of His Father, the Messiah, Joshua, Yehoshua, Yahawashai, Jesus the Christ, Hamashiach, Yahusha, the Most High Father, Jah, Yah, who the world knows wrongly as God, but you know how that goes. He made all things, and all things that I speak about now operate within His calculations. Everything. Everything. And His calendar is like that. The sun, moon, and stars operate within just allotted days. They were given for signs, seasons, days, and years. There's no mentioning of weeks. There's no mentioning of the word months. And there's no mentioning of appointed days or holy days, although the word seasons, like I said, it can mean appointed days or festivals, but that's not what, what it meant in that context. I haven't found anybody that can truly gainsay things, but yes, they might pick apart the, the 24 hour day and focus on one thing, but when we take everything into consideration, this is the revelation of Jaz Almanac. I feel blessed to be a part of it. And I pray the most I continue to strengthen us all. Well, if you got this far, thanks for listening. I want to give all glory to Joshua the Messiah, to the glory of John the Father, also known as Yah, Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. Bless up, one love.